Hello everyone, my name is Jim Lewis. I'm the founder of Model Train Technology. We're a new company and we're focused on lighting and animation and sound. And today is a virtual workshop where we're going to be highlighting two groups of products that we make. One is light boards for passenger cars and cabooses, and we'll show you how we, how we do that. And then the second section is our lighting controllers for buildings and uh, the layout. And included in that are our new fiber optic controlling uh, control lighting systems. As well, we'll show you some new products at the end, including our multicolored uh, block signals that are lit and controlled by fiber optic lighting. It makes everything a whole lot easier. Uh, we, this is going to be a, a whirlwind that takes about 40 minutes for the two sections, and then uh, we'd be happy to, to hear from you. Uh, if you'd like to reach us directly, my email is jim at modeltrainman.com or model, jim at modeltraintechnology.com. Both will get you to, this, to me. And our website is modeltraintechnology.com. Uh, if you forget all of that, you can go to your browser tomorrow morning or whatever and type model train lighting and animation. And pretty sure you're going to see us listed in the top four or five companies on Google. So that's a really easy way. You don't even have to write anything down. Uh, really appreciate hearing from you. And uh, we're excited to share with you uh, what we've invented over the last 18 months. Thanks for watching. In this section of the video, we're going to talk about building lighting. As we talked about last time, we, we had the passenger car lighting and we developed a circuit board uh, for that and a decoder. Well, in this case, what we did is, is I'm an N-scaler and this is where we started. So I built a board that has 16 circuits, not just the two, and uh, it works uh, quite simply. It also has the DCC decoder on it and we just give it power and we were going to set select the loco and uh, enter let's see loco 3 enter and there you go and so we can control uh, and set animations and we started building all sorts of animations we have flicker blink uh, Mars lighting, uh, fading in and out, random. And so we're going to talk about those things today. But anyway, this is the first uh, LED controller board that we built. And I designed this specifically, I'm going to unplug it, to fit inside my N-scale building. So I'm going to open this up in a second, but this is sitting in the roof. And right now we have this on animation mode. And I've set almost all the pins to random. Uh, you can see this one blinking every once in a while. This building over here is kind of cool because it's the smallest N-scale uh, model building. These are, this is actually a pre-built one from Woodland Scenic. And uh, you, what they do is they have one LED inside in the roof and then they darken all the windows. So the first thing that I did was just gutted the inside of the building and put some frosted glass. Pretty simple. Uh, just taking all of that out and then uh, what we have here, I'm going to turn this around so you can see that the controller board is actually in the back of this uh, styrene uh, room carcass, if you will. So we, it's pretty simple. Just cut some styrene, glue it together with super glue. And on the room light, on the uh, building lights, like this yellow entrance light here, uh, we used that same technique. We used a warm white bulb and kept dipping it in uh, clear gallery glass, dries crystal clear, and then the last coat or two, uh, we used pumpkin, and it turns out that pumpkin produces the best orange uh, for our purposes here. And the beauty of this is, and that will just slide on right there, is that underneath all of this, there's only two wires coming out to my layout. So in the building, there are two wires going down, and that's pretty easy to connect. Uh, this upper right-hand window here, you might see it flickering in different colors of red, green, and blue. Uh, we use a RGB red, green, blue LED connected to the circuit board, and it simulates a TV. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool, and you can do that. Uh, it doesn't take much. This can be programmed with your DCC system. Uh, I'm going to take this one apart so you can see how this one's uh, made as well. It's a little bit trickier to get this guy off just because of the styrene and everything connected but there you can see the circuit board on top and this can be powered from DCC you can create a zone 
uh, specifically for your animation and lighting, if you'd like. Or on all of the boards, uh, there is an extra set of pads, connectors, that you can run a 12 volt supply so that you're taking up only the DCC signal, but supplying the lights to the building is coming from another source. So that's a, a lot of flexibility in that. And this is one of my favorite buildings. And I'm actually, I'm going to just turn it around like this. You can see we've also used a gallery glass uh, dipped 0402 light in there. And then we just used a red LED on top. Okay, so you just put that down. And uh, that's pretty cool. There you can see the two wires coming out from under the building. All right, so that was the micro board is what we call that. Then we started thinking, all right, well, so if we're going to connect uh, Woodland Scenic and other product, what else is out there? that we can use. And we looked at the hub system, we looked at all of the different uh, capabilities, and we weren't really satisfied. So we built the first, uh, specifically for trains, this is called the LED scene controller, now lighting scene controller, uh, uses another power supply here. All the plugs are plug compatible with Woodland Scenic, um, but we didn't like paying $4 a light. These are Woodland Scenic lights here. This is one of our little junction boxes. Uh, these are about $4.50, even on Amazon or eBay. It's pretty expensive. So we, can, we wanted to have people light their buildings and do a lot of it. So we manufacture our own, what we call these LED chips. We have these assembled for us here in Orlando, Florida, with, including the connector. And this is plug compatible completely with Woodland Scenic. There's no resistor on this, so you don't have to worry about it. We've built all the electronics and all the resistor. Uh, power supply, different voltages can all be supplied and controlled by the scene controller. Now this, this is our demo unit for our dealers and uh, we just took a Woodland Scenics flat kit, painted them up, I put a magnet in so these will stay intact. And we have two different kinds of lighting here. You'll notice uh, this shine through, we have a frosted glass type. When you do that, I recommend you put the light directly in the back of the, the back wall so it shines out through the frosted glass uh, properly. Uh, here I just took, uh, I went to Google Images and cut up some cardstock and folded it and put that inside. Now you might, un in the last demo I did, I made this blinking. This should have all been random. So let's change, I'll show you how simple it is to change the special effect on any one of the ports. So here's our controller. Uh, right now without the display on, it's in animation mode and that's that's just the running mode, if you will. So I push this button and hold it, and now it shows port one on the left side and the animation effect on the right side. There are 99 uh, special effects. Uh, plus, you can also use CVs to uh, fine tune this. There's over 5 million capabilities, so 5 million settings that each individual controller can, uh, can be set to. So what we do is we push the up and down buttons to move to the LED port that we want to control, okay? And this is the one that was blinking. So let's change it to Mars, uh, Mars effect. So that's a uh, sort of fading up flash and fading down. And right now you see port four is set to three. I know three is blinking. So if I, change, if I uh, push this to four, uh, I know that's the Mars effect. And I save that. And then I push it back into animation mode and just watch what happens over here. It's as simple as that to program all of the different effects for the ports. Now there's 16 ports on the controller. It also has a full DCC control uh, decoder in it, and it can be set to behave as a multifunction decoder or an accessory switch. So each one of these uh, ports can be operated by a switch and you can have multiple controllers overlapping switch numbers or in parallel, it doesn't matter. Um, we have the connectors that I mentioned before, so you can connect 64 LEDs up to a single controller. Uh, the controller has a one amp capacity. Each port has 100 milliamp capacity. So you couldn't fill all the ports with 100 milliamps because that would be 1.6 amps, uh, but that's more than enough. We ran a demonstration uh, test case, uh, hooked up 64 LEDs just like this, plugged it in, and running at 50% power just worked great. Uh, again, each port can operate and be set to uh, a different special effect. 
And if you were to buy all these special effects, whether it's uh, flashing police cars, alternate flashing, marquees, uh, welding effect, lightning effect, if you were to buy eight or 10 of those, you've already paid for the unit. So this is a much better way to go. You can um, put this near your control system and then run wi the wires out as you need to uh, to the layout. Or uh, there's uh, various versions of this. Uh, here's another version which doesn't have the keypad, uh, but this works like the board I showed you earlier and it's fully program programmable via your DCC system. And this could fit right inside the building. So lots of options in terms of uh, the configuration there. All right, so let's bring up one other, another demonstration here. Okay, same type of controller, and uh, this is an HO status building. Uh, these are two uh, lights that I got off of eBay. They can be controlled. Here is the Woodland Scenics uh, police car that I took apart. I added uh, some more LEDs and connected that up, and so they can be controlled separately. And here is just the, the hotel. You've probably seen this before. And in this case, I used the uh, roomettes. They're cardboard cutouts for the rooms and just glued the LED right on top and then just ran the wires out back. Here's a couple of our junction connectors and, uh, and that's the way that worked. And like I said, here's the controller and this will fit right inside. If, the, if you wanna have all of the wires inside the, 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 the building and then just have the two wires coming out to control DCC. All right. So let's show you another controller we have here. All right, so this, this uh, by the way, uh, we started making our cases in the United States. We 3D print everything, which is truly amazing. And so we, now we can make uh, cases. And as we change the product design, uh, we just change the design in the software and start printing a new one. Uh, here's a test board that we use for configure, configuring uh, and testing. You can buy this on the, the website when you buy the controller. And this just plugs into the back. And we have other sizes. Uh, in fact, here's the terminal block. And this will fit inside the woodland scenes. The spacing of the connectors is the same. Uh, so you can, so th theirs is actually a four block hub. So there's a version of this. Uh, which has four blocks, and you can you can connect that up. All right, so let's plug this in and turn it on. I'm going to try to do this upside down. So 111 means this is in the multifunction mode. If it was 2222, it would be in switch mode. And you can see now you can combine effects working uh, the special effects across ports. So this is the uh, this is what I call the uh, the race. And then there's another one that's chased, so it just goes one way and one way like the landing lights. And uh, here's one where we're going to use the CV's programming ability on the controller without, like, we're not connected to DCC, but we keep consistent with the DCC system. And we're going to change the rate of speed of that uh, special effect. So I've moved it into uh, configuration mode. And again, you see port one here, and I can just go up and through the ports, okay? But we're gonna do something that affects all of the ports. So I'm gonna go and hold these bottom two buttons for a couple of seconds, and it'll flip into CV mode. So C stands for CV mode, and it's at 208. This is typically the one that's used for triggers, but uh, what we're gonna do is we want CV 122. So we can go, we can go up or down, doesn't matter. We're gonna get ourselves to 122. Okay, and I'm going to push this once. That shows me the value is three. So that's pretty fast for the, the display here. I want to increase that number to, let's say, 12. So more, the higher the number, the more time it takes to get from one pin to the other. Uh, the yellow is the save button. And then we're just going to put it back into animation mode. And you can see that it's going to go much slower. Okay, so there are lots and lots of special effects to, that are available on the device. Uh, you can have a lot of fun at that DCC connection, and uh, there you go. 
All right, so that's been pretty much the first year. Um, in the middle of the summer last year, we came out, we started working with fiber optics. I've been doing fiber optic projects for a long time. And the first thing we did was make a fiber optic controller that used all the 16 channels with the LEDs inside the box. And you can see now, you can see all the lighting. Each one of these is individually controllable, all the same animations that we just talked about. I have a three millimeter fiber put in here, um, or you can use our pin system, and we're gonna demonstrate that in a minute. We have uh, special pins that go in for different size fibers. So if you have a 70.75 millimeter fiber, uh, that'll work 1.0 and one and a half millimeter. All three of those will work comfortably in this system. Uh, one thing, all of the controllers, just this is a dummy unit, have a magnetic base plate and a magnetic on here. So you can use um, double stick tape if you like, or just slide it in, that, the magnets are not in the way. But if you, if you get the bracket, you can mount the bracket upside down on the side or whatever, and it's strong enough to hold the unit in place and just pop it apart. So that's really cool. All right, so in concert with a company called Dwarven, um, we invented, this is our controller, we've invented a fiber version. Uh, this has fewer special effects, it really only has three. It's on for a port, it has uh, blinking or alternate flashing. So alternate flashing would be something like a crossing gate, uh, the, the light that alternate flashes back and forth, and you can see uh, that we have each of the ports. Now you'll notice there are two lights on for each number. So there are eight ports with 16 holes. So there's there's two together. So if you were going to do a, a flashing signal, you'd have two opposite uh, or adjacent uh, sets of two, and you'd run the port out to your crossing gate. Now what we're going to do is demonstrate another uh, method or another application. Here's a cast model car, and we drilled the headlights out and just put in uh, inserted some fiber optic, clipped it, and now here you can see the pins that we were just talking about. And they're at the end, and so we're just going to insert them into the two connectors, pin port one and port two, and I'm just going to cycle back and forth between them. So, you, so special effects uh, like that. So that's pretty cool. But wait, there's more. So what we want to do is we want to trigger those lights to come on. So as part of our release in 2021, this year, uh, we have a series of detectors. Uh, this is a magnetic detector, and uh, it's the same magnetic detector we used in the light board, no moving parts, so no reed switches or anything like that. We designed the fiber controller to have a power supply. I'm twist this a little bit. So the power supply to run the detector. So that's on this side over here. And I'm going to turn the power off, get that going. And on this side, we have eight detection circuits. All right, so there's a lot you can do with this. And here's the, here's the application of the, uh, the terminal block, the four-point block. And I'm going to turn this on. Okay, and so I'm going to, so we have... Nothing on here, I'm going to roll this across, and you can see I've set this to alternate flash, triggered by this magnetic detector, and it has a timeout of five seconds. So you can change the timeout, uh, and you can speed up or slow down the flashing. So you could have this the, the flashing going on for 10 or 15, 20 seconds, um, however you like, uh, all controlled by the uh, fiber lighting controller. And did I mention this also has a DCC decoder in it, like everything else. And so to wrap this up, I uh, wanted to share with you our newest product. Uh, this, is, this just came out and will be available in about a week's time. And what this is, is a block signal controlled, oops, let's Cut these backwards. Let me do this. 
So using the same detector, um, we will also have infrared detection uh, under track like this. So this is magnetic, we'll have infrared, and we will also have a version that's on the side of the car. So you don't have to dig under the track, you can just put it next to it. Now, when the car goes and triggers the light, you'll see that the light changed from green to red, and there's a timeout period, and then it will change back to green, and you can adjust that time period. So how simple is it to connect our block signal? Here's, here's the block signal. I ran a hole through the layout. Here's two fibers. Uh, these come in 10-foot lengths, so you can just run it out to the controller, literally just plug it in like that, go to the other side, plug it in like that, I do. Oh, this came loose. There we go. At the uh, in February, so this is a red and green. So this is a really simple one. Uh, we will have a dwarf version of this, and then in uh, February we will have a a unit, uh, a controller that's about the size of this box will go under the layout. It will have holes for the fiber optics. And in that case, there will be red, yellow, and green. And all you do is you put that under the layout, connect your detector and power, and run the three fiber optics, red, green, and yellow, into the box. And you have a fiber-controlled lock signal. Thank you very much. Uh, that's it. Now, uh, we'd ha be happy to take questions and answer uh, any uh, curiosities that you have. And thanks for watching.